Hello everyone, this is Detective DHC and welcome to the DHC Network and today we are back in another Let's Play on L.A. Noir. We are now on case number 14, the studio secretary murder. So the last one was pretty, it was pretty easy though. I could have gotten perfect but the clues just pretty much messed me up. So um, I'll try to get a, a really good perfect score on this one. So um, furthermore, enough of me talking. Let's get straight to the gameplay, shall we? The Studio Secretary Murder She's way too close to the freaking train. Uh-oh. we will look into it yes I'm aware that it's an election year keep a hold of your hat counselor now is not the time to lose your nerve it would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring a matching engagement ring sound familiar Deirdre Muller press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out the address is 348 South Main Street the Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. Forty-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. All right, let's get to work. So it looks like another murder mystery. I just just remember, guys. Another body, and Deirdre Muller's ring. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. What exactly did you get that book of riddles shoved up your ass, Phelps? Is that what your old man paid college tuition for? So anyway, just remember guys, if the victim has no clothes on, I have to edit, ha edit it out because you know, it's not worth the risk. Alright, so Rusty, let's drive. Can you drive to this one? The first place we're going to go to is... Fine. Where are we headed? The first place we're gonna go to is the pawn broker, so let's head over there right now. You've got to admit, this is looking odd. Anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Cole, Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's groundkeeper. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sakes. And he always maintained he was set up. Tom Broker, 10 18 a.m. This is the spot. Let's check it out. Let's see what's going on. Where is he at? I'm gonna help you boys. Where's he at? Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? Fifty bucks? Try another number. Twenty? Try ten. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and examine two rings. Let's check them out. Let's check this one first. Okay. What's this mark here? Maker's Mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Okay. Thanks for the tip. Alright, now let's check the other ring. Does this mark mean anything? Hallmark. Gives you an idea of the quality. 22K. Let's put it back. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? Goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 15 Poland Street, London, Tulare County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? I'm not sure. Medium height, medium build. Dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. So, yeah, we're looking at we're going to some new leads right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... 
We got some new leads for those rings, so let's go to the next you area. You know the way. You can drive. To the rail Where yard. Where exactly are we going? Rusty, you just don't listen. You just like to be lazy, don't you? No wonder your life's a midnight crisis. We have a problem. We could have the local troopers check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. Herp is having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. How do you figure that one? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. If the Dahlia letters are genuine, then the man who killed Elizabeth Stewart may have also killed Deirdre Mott. And how do we prove that? Skipper ain't gonna like this one bit. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. You boys ready? Follow me. We should keep this development with the rings under our hat until we speak with the captain. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. Got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. Where are your 11.02 a.m.? Hard, isn't it? Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Keep an eye on both of them. Okay, so we're gonna first, we're gonna talk to these guys first. Before we start investigating. Let's talk. Detective Phelps. LAPD homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. <laughs> it's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law your against it. Like a man. That's it. He deserved pockets, it. Ferdinand. Classic All right, here we go. Can we further investigate it? No, we can't. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop. Don't hit him. All right, we're going to interview John Ferdinand Jameson. So, first question, discovery of victim's body. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. Hmm. I don't know the way he said that, and he's making a weird looking for Yep, there it is. So we're gonna go with Dow. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is gonna look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I could tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. <laughs> Rusty just won. He wants to hit him so bad. Next question Interface with. Interference with evidence. You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. I'm gonna go with truth. Did you take any money? It wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick and her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... <laughs> Fly. You get this sack of shit into a cell. I'll deal with him later. Sure, Freaky Rusty. Rusty. Freaky Rusty. He just likes to hit people. That's where you know he likes his job. Kind of. All right. So, um, good thing the the victim is has clothes on. So let's investigate the clues. There's the handbag. Let's take a look at all this stuff. Evelyn's shit for personal items, not booze. It's an angle worth investigating. Alright, we got that one. Alright. No, 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 I'll just investigate it. Can we just change it? There you go. Alright, let's let's investigate it. Message bar. Will remember her. 
Alright, we got ourselves the next location. And what's inside the purse? Okay, let's check over here. A letter. Someone was trying to get her to come home. We're missing the other half. Alright, uh, what's in here? The keys don't feel good. Go company. over to the lot and see what they know about her. That's going to be difficult, Cole. Keystone Studio lot closed back in 41. Hmm, pretty suspicious, though. All right, then now let's examine the body. Good thing she's wearing clothes this time. Because the first three um, cases were actually... They had no clothes on, so... Let's see what we're gonna look for. Um, let's go to the head. Let's check what's wrong with her head. Smell? Ow. Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell. But it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. All right, here we go. Let's check her hands. See if she has anything on her. Uh, not this hand. Her hand looks normal before she died. Let's check the other hand. Her ring. Another missing ring. It certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. And I think that's it. I think we found everything we, we can find now. Yep, that's it. Now let's go ahead. Oh yeah, let's talk to coroner. Don't forget to talk to him. What have we got here? White female, approximately 40 years of age. Lipstick smudges on the face, but no writing. At least nothing legible. A blunt force trauma to the temple, nose, and eye regions. Ligature marks point to the probable cause of death being strangulation. Any idea of the time of death? From her temperature, after midnight would be my guess. Uh, I think there's one more person we've got to talk to. I don't know. Wait, is that him? Oh, yeah, that's him. What are you thinking, Ray? The city keeps tossing us dead bodies. We're just running to catch up. Alright, now we gotta talk to this Nelson guy. Oh, this guy we gotta talk to. Let's talk to him. Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. What time was this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your details? I have, sir. Thank you. You can go now. Well, just remember you have to talk to those three people before you, um, before you head off. So let's go ahead and get to the telephone and make a phone call right now. Phelps, 1247. I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, detective. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks for your help. All right, so that's everything. Let's go ahead and get out of here, and let's go to our next location. You can drive. Let's go to Levine's Liquor Store. Fine. Where are we headed? Rusty sure hates driver, but he likes to, he loves punching people. You read that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them? Yeah. Yeah, I read about that. Those people are starving. They can't do that. They want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. Really? I guess that's okay then. Armies can't fight without food. Spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds will win in China. Watch your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country overthrew a king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving? Let's 
Levine's liquor store, 11.37 a.m. What can I do for you? LAPD, Phelps and Galloway. We're making inquiries into the murder of Evelyn Summers. Evelyn? She's dead? You knew Evelyn Summers, Mr. Robbins? Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff here. Can you show us, please? Sure. Come this way. Well, he looks like he's gonna, he's gonna show us something, so let's check it out before we... I think we're gonna interview him, if I'm correct. Okay, this is... You got some fine stock here, Mr. Robbins. You know, you let us take some for the road, this case might get solved a lot quicker. Freaking Rusty. He really wants that he's alcohol. He's joking, Mr. Robbins. She kept a bed here. He's not. But I probably shouldn't have let her. An alcoholic in a liquor store. That was never going to work out, was it? We'll take right. a look around. All right, let's take a look in here. All right, there must be a book or some kind. Let's look at the photo first. She wasn't always such a loner. She looks like she had friends. Let's look at this book. Evelyn was reading Aristotle? Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was her need to drink. Mm-hmm. Let's further investigate. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. Can we further investigate? All right, let's see what else we can find. Another picture. I guess this one didn't help. All right, well, what's this? Well, we got some items what here. exactly did Evelyn work in the pictures? A few years ago. She worked in legal copyrights for music. Oh. All right, that's one piece of evidence. It's, what's this? It looks like a flare. I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. All right, and a bowling pin. What's Rowling Bowling. Rowling's Bowling Alley. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink in her spare time. Rowling's. I know that place. Corner of Ninth and Grand. A lot of cops bowl there on Tuesday nights. Well then, it looks like we got more evidence. And that is that is all the clues here. So let's go back to the liquor store and talk to um Walter. I think that's his name, Walter. All right, we're going to interview Walter Robbins. First question, contact with victim. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things? She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Sounds truthful. We're going with truth. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Probably her boyfriend. We got that right. Next question. Relationship with victim. Were you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robbins? Not many people will be sad she's gone. I'll be one of the few. The way he talks, it does sound truthful. I like, and the way he talks, I just like that. Let's go on with truth. We got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her stay in here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. But she's old now. And to be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. All right, we got another one right. Last question, knowledge of McCaffrey. Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. We're gonna go with doubt. We're struggling for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. From what I gather, the feeling was far from mutual. He seems to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. 
Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. You think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. Man, I'm not gonna lie. The person who, who plays this guy is actually really good. He did really good voice acting him. All right, then. Looks like we're going to our next lead. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. And where exactly are we going? We're going to Mench's Bar. So let's go to Mench's Bar. Where's it at? And let's go. Mench Bar, 11.47 a.m. Drink, fellas. Phelps, Galloway, homicide. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Mench. Evelyn Summers, what is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? Uh, a bunch of these guys. Ask around. All right, let's look around. Who had to talk What's to? What's your name? Grosvenor McCaffrey. Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers? and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Okay, that guy, there's something bad about him. Just, it's, he looks really bad, like evil. So we're gonna interview him. First question, criminal history. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. Hmm. Okay, the way he said that, that seems like a lie, but we don't ever go with doubt. You want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes, strikes, workers' rights, that kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. All right, next question. Relationship with victim. You say you barely knew Evelyn? Yes, that is correct. That's a lie. You're lying, McCaffrey. You looked down your nose at Evelyn, but you knew her, and you have some idea of what happened. I hope you're holding aces. I'm telling you again, I barely knew the woman. All right, the evidence is the book with his name on it. Why would you lend her your book on metaphysics if you only knew her in passing? It was more than that. A renaissance man like yourself lending his books to his acolytes. She hounded me about that goddamn book. And then she lifts it from my apartment and lies to my face that she didn't take it. As if she could even comprehend any of it. I saw her go into a hotel with Tiernan last night. They had booze in a paper bag. He's your man. All right. Thank you for the information, Mr. McCaffrey. All right, looks like we got some new clues already. Let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead to the next place. You're behind the wheel. Fine. Where are we headed? You already know the bowling alley. Let's go. On the double. Eleven King. A message from Captain Donnelly. Return to Central. Go to. Eleven King. En route. Actually, guys, um, I have to drive this one. Oh, hang on a sec. Um, let's go through the case notes because basically it's taking the bus to the police station. 
You guys remember what happened last time? Um. You drive. I need to go over no, the No, no, I'll notes. drive. I'll drive. How do I take out the, the notes? Take the next left. Hang on. I guess we have to go to... Oh my goodness. Where did... Where's the bowling alley? Why can't I go to the bowling alley? Why, why are we going to the police station? I'm not going to go there. All right, hang on. You know the way. You can drive. I guess we'll just let Rusty drive. Central Police Station, 12.06 p.m. Unfortunately, we can't go back to the... You can drive. Oh, wait. And where exactly are we going? Never mind. We're go let's go to the bowling alley fast. Let's go. Let's go. We're not going to the police station yet. No. Because remember what happened that one case when I missed the divorce papers? We're not doing it again. R Raleigh's bowling alley, 12 10 p.m. Hello, Rusty. Two on your usual lane? I'm Detective Phelps. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? We're conducting an investigation, ma'am. Do you know the name Evelyn Summers? Sounds like I should. Oh, maybe it could be Jimmy's friend. Jimmy? James Tiernan. He's a pin setter. One day he introduced me to a lady after work. Stuck in my mind because she was much older, too old for him. Where can we find Jimmy Florence? He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. Okay, then, let's go ahead and get this guy. Two peanuts what? are walking down the street. Is what? that him? Let's take it some better days. No, that's not him. That cherry pie was being lit. Down the left side of the alley. The left side? That's that cop. Let me see. Where are you, where are you at, Rusty? You pretty much know this place pretty well. Alright, let's go ahead and head outside. Where is the... Oh, okay, there's a door nearby. I didn't see that door, so let's go. This is a nice bowling alley. I wish we could play bowling. And no, guys. Cernan, LAPD! All right, it's a chase sequence. Let's go. Oh, he better not take the car. Rusty, you got to drive. There. We're taking this random car. What are you waiting for? Get after him. We might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. <laughs> All right, let's go. These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast-living individual with money to burn. Come on, Rusty, shoot him! a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. Hit it! Clean this asshole off the road! Whoa! Whoa! Another Oops. runner. Well, at least we've got a suspect. Why do they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to lamb it. You know, your theories are not oh my God. by any means, I hate the driving hey. sequences so much, Come Rusty. Come on, Phelps, you're losing that little weasel. Next time, Rusty, you're the driving. Killer, oh my God, this car! Endangerment. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. Come on, car, go fast. These cars are not meant to go fast in this time of era. Next time, Rusty, you're driving. You gotta let me shoot He's one of these days. Going through the square. I hope the people see him in time to get out of the way. Oops. What if they run because someone oh my setting God. them up? Because they feel like the deck is stacked against them. Nah, don't make up ridiculous stories for them, detective. Leave that to the perp's imagination. This guy just does one stop. Whoa, looks like we're going into the tunnels. Uh -oh. God damn it, he'll kill himself. Exactly. Right, as long as he doesn't kill us, I'm okay with it. 
Rusty. Don't go to sleep on me. Give me back in close. Come on, let's go, Rusty. I think we got him. Two tires. Ah. Huh. He just don't want to stop. Keep shooting, Rusty. You're doing good. Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tires. I think we have to get out the tunnel first before we proceed. This place is unsafe, you know. That is the end of that. We Without got him. Fucking time. Put your hands in the air. Okay, so we got another suspect in the bars now, so let's go to the next location. Can you drive to this one? Fine. Where are we headed? We're going to the police station. So, remember guys, if you ever get to this point, if you're missing any clues, don't go to the police station. Just get to the other location before it's too late. Go to every place that's possible. Okay, we're back at the police station. Let's see what's new around here. The captain is downstairs with Ray Pinker. And Carruthers. All right, so it looks like we're gonna see the captain again and uh, the coroner too. Whoops, there's nobody in this room yet. All right, let's go downstairs then. Okay, man, I still don't remember the layout of this place. Only because there is a different police. It's not the same one compared to that traffic, you know. All right, I think it's this way. There's any room two. Oh, this is technical services. There you go. There's, there's the stairs. Parker or Blaine? I don't know for a fact that the captain's there somewhere. There they are. What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Muller cases, which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycats. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, cartel classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Terrelson didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick, but she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it say? You sure you want to know, Ray? As far as we can be sure, it said cunt BD. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, Phelps. You're married, so yours is mortgage. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case, but it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep this under your hat for now. And to follow up on Evelyn Summers, I want daily reports. All right, so look. We got our orders. Back to the Summers case. Get an address for McCaffrey. He'll have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside. All right, let's go Need ahead and um. I got the jitters again. Let's call, let's make a phone call right now. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, batch twelve forty-seven. I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Apartment 6, 126 Yale Street, between Ord and Alpine. Thanks, ma'am. All right, then we got ourselves an address for uh, McCaffrey, so let's head, let's head out already. Go, you're here, Rusty. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? We're going to the McCaffrey's apartment. Let's go. McCaffrey. Let me pose a question. Depends. What you got to do with? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? 
Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slammer ever found out. McCaffrey's apartment, 4.29 p.m. Alright, let's look at the apartment number. He's at apartment McCaffrey six. McCaffrey's in apartment six. Alright, let's go inside and find him. Let's see if there's a way up or something. This is four. This place is light, it's dark, it's so dark. Alright, let's find apartment six. I think somewhere here. I think it's upstairs. Hmm. Yeah, this place gets me the creep for some reason. It's just so quiet. There it is, apartment six. Doesn't look like anybody's home. <laughs> I just love when they kick doors. Alright, so we got we gotta find some clues here, so what's this? Oh, it's the second half of that letter we found earlier. Torn from the letter we found beside the body. At the very least I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. It does. And I think there's one wait, what's this? Bloody clothes. And another tire iron. We found the murder weapon. He said he was at home. He said he didn't know her. And we have the book. And is that the bowling alley? Let's see, Carruthers argues his way out of this one. Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Is he in trouble? Look, lady, we need to find him, and in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. Surely we can ride him up for that. A citation, at least. All right, so we got all our clues there now. Now we, we're gonna head up already. Wait, where would we go? Is there more stairs? Yeah, there's this. So let's take the stairs. I thought that was it, but I guess not. Seems like a decent guy. Okay, that's just a regular guy hanging. I thought it was a suspect at first. All right, we found our way to, but to the roof. Because there is a, pig a pigeon. There it is. Grosvenor McCaffrey! Running on a hangover, McCaffrey? Sit oh my down God. and we'll talk! I'll go get our wheels. Really, Rusty, you just don't want to drive. So it looks like we're doing ni more 1950s style parkour. But anyways, uh, why did they always run? Like, come on now. Looks like we gotta go Madden Street. <laughs> Alright, let's go up here. Rusty needs to get the car ready. I'm the one who's trying to do all the chasing here. You a runner, McCaffrey? Stay and fight the good fight. I don't understand why he decided to run. Can't just talk because he probably knows he did it. Come on, let's go. Just a further, more closer. Almost there. I just need to get faster. Give it up, LAPD. This guy does not want to stop. Uh, where's Rusty with the car? He's taking forever. Come on. Come on, give me the option now. Alright, come on, we're about to tackle him. Damn, this dude's fast. <laughs> Can't we talk about this? What was that scream about? Alright, come on. Let's punch this guy. We gotta take him down for all that running. Let's finish him already. Ooh, scope buster and knockout. We need to get downtown and wrap this thing up. It's got to be McCaffrey, unless Tyrannin set him up. 
You don't think that asshole Jameson could have done it, do you? Ah, uh, whoever did it. At least it wasn't that Dahlia fuck. How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the Dahlia? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. So, man, this Black Dahlia thing is so you interesting. You think the list is exhaustive, Rusty? Who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together at a later date. I'll hold you to that. Central Police Station, 7.18 p.m. You sure you can make it stick with one of these suspects, gentlemen? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. Tiernan is not one, McCaffrey is not two. I want the confession from one of them. Don't fail me, young Phelps. So both Tiernan and McCaffrey here. So let's go to interview one. Where is that room at? Somewhere. I know somewhere here in the main lobby. It's over here, I believe. There it is. Why did you run, Tiernan? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. Alright then, let's go ahead and interview James Tiernan. First question. Relationship with victim. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Lie. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? Alright, the, the... 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 The evidence is victim last scene. McCaffrey gave you up, Tiernan. He says he saw you go into your hotel with Evelyn. I met Evelyn at the public library. We would read for a while and then go for a drink. Last night, we went back to my hotel room and had some more to drink. I, I must have passed out. I woke up and she was gone. What time was this? Around midnight, maybe later. And there's no one who can confirm this? No, there isn't. I knew you wouldn't believe me. All right, we got that right. Next question. Victim's book frowned. Aristotle's Metaphysics, the book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it? She wanted something of his. Mm, okay, we're gonna go with doubt. We either hang this on you or McCaffrey. You better give us something. Well, McCaffrey's been in trouble with the law before. I mean, he always makes out it was some kind of labor dispute. But, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. I right, we got that right. Next question. Alibi for James Tiernan. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night, and she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. He's lying. The way he said that. There's more to that. You're lying, Tiernan. You've been fighting with her. You fought and... I'm not lying! She got up and left! That was it! And the evidence is the liquor purchase. She left, but she came back. She bought you a quart of whiskey to make it up to you. She told the liquor store owner, you're in deep trouble, buddy. She said she loved me. She wanted to care for me. She would never stop talking about McCaffrey. McCaffrey was a writer, and McCaffrey was a hero. McCaffrey cared for the little guy. Did you kill her, Tiernan? I might as well have. I kicked her out. She had nowhere to go. All right, last question. Access to murder weapon. Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? No, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. Doubt. He's lying. Look at that face. He's trying to hide it. Coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. 
it can be very cruel. All right, so now that we got evidence, do not charge the suspect. Delete the interrogation. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. A uh, big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was made from an old typewriter key, a present from the prop department at her old movie studio. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. You're not in the clear. Okay, so after now that we interviewed Tim, we're gonna interview McCaffrey. So he's at interview room two. So isn't this way? Here we go. There the now we're gonna interview McCaffrey again. You ready to answer some questions? You think I have all the answers? People who run from the police usually have something to hide. Touche, detective. Let's see where this takes us. All right, so we're going to interview Gross or McCaffrey. First question, alibi for McCaffrey. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. He's lying. You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. And what do you have that proves I was there? The evidence is the, tor the torn note. Where is it at? I know I for sure collected it. There it is. Torn letter. How about half of Augusta Summer's last correspondence with her daughter? What are you talking about? After you were done beating Evelyn, you searched her and found her mother's letter. That old lady's anguish amused you. I know nothing about a letter or Evelyn's goddamn mother. So what was it doing on your writing desk? I don't know, but if I didn't put it there, somebody else did. Try exercising your powers of deduction on that. Next question. Um, access to tire iron. We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? I, I think he's definitely lying. I don't believe you, Grosvenor. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? And the, and the evidence is Tiernan's accusation. Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation. That's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. I listened to him, and he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. It looks like we're not going to charge McCaffrey either. What's the phone? Operator, give me R&I. Putting you through now. You think those vice boys get any on the side? Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? I need the jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, Detective. McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Convictions for petty theft. Dishonorable discharge from the Army during training at Syracuse. Assault on a local woman. Says he almost beat the woman to death. Thank you. So we just got more more clues, more evidence. He was in the military, so. All right, then let's go to James Tinderman. Where it, he's at interview one, so let's head over there right now. No entiendo. We're back. You spoken to McCaffrey? I can go, it's all been cleared up. Not quite. We have one more question we need to ask, James. Then I think we will be done. Sure, go ahead. All right, the next question. Prior to murder. So Evelyn passed out. 
and you walked out. What happened next? I woke up in the morning, very hungover. I thought Evelyn would have come back. He's hiding something, so he's lying. I know you're lying, James. You went out looking for her. Tell me what really happened. I don't know what you're talking about. How, how can you say I wasn't in that hotel room? The evidence is, is the latest one. And that's McCaffrey's accusation. You wound up at McCaffrey's. You were still incredibly drunk. You passed out on his floor. It's time to tell me what really happened. McCaffrey woke me up the next morning. And he showed me the lug wrench and the letter and the box. And he said I came in with him last night. He said that I killed Evelyn. And that it was all over the radio. And that he would protect me. And I don't know, Detective, for the life of me, I can't remember a goddamn thing. And I was angry with her. Really angry. I could have done it. It wasn't me. Oh, that do take so long. So we're not gonna hang on. Not yet. Let's go. Let's, let's leave the interrogation yet. So we're not gonna. We're not gonna charge him yet. Now let's go see McCaffrey again. So we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. Oh no, no, that's not the way. We're going to interview number two. Uh, next question for McCaffrey, military service. You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw, it changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? He's lying. Definitely lying. You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? And the last one, McCaffrey's criminal record, according from the phone. We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge. Beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore. She tried to steal from my wallet. I could have fought for this country. I could have. You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch. What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers, a poor, drunken nobody, stole your book. And she got what was coming to her. And we're gonna charge. He is a suspect, so we're gonna charge him. We're gonna charge um, McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey, I'm charging you with the murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Congratulations, boys! You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot, Grant. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse, and neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot at the prison graveyard. All right then, I did a really good job on this one. We got five stars with all clues and all questions correct. And yep, there you goes have it. I another perfect score. I wish I could have continued with a streak. Let's see if we could continue that next. So let's see. Damn, vehicle damage and 668 city damage. Wow. Let's read the case notes. 
Governor McCaffrey can write a del a tele art from himself on death row. So yeah, I did really good on this case. It was a tough one, but I cracked it. I know for sure I probably messed this one up during my stream last year. So I guess we're gonna wrap this up here. So um, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give a thumbs like new here, my subscribe. This is L.A. Noir art. Um, excuse me, L.A. Noir on um, case number fourteen. The Studio Secretary Murder. So as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And welcome to the DHC Network. This is Detective DHC saying, signing out.